City? It's All right, City, okay. <laughs> Slap City, though? Slap City. Actually a fantastic oh, game. I'll, I'll die on that hill. It's a great competitive game. Um, all right, now we have it. We actually saw Dark Falcon play against a different Pyra Mithra with Blazing um, earlier on in Loser's Semis, I believe that was. Uh, but we had talked about how the, you know, you had mentioned how those play styles are different. And so now let's see if Dark Falcon can adjust to this different style of Pyra Mithra as we are uh, moving into grand finals here. Dark Talk is going to need to take two sets. Oh, whereas it feels like, who? yeah, Jonathan just wants to get this over with. Look at this, 90%. The fact that, uh, you know, besides his up B, generally speaking, the Belmonts don't really have a great way to combo break. So as long as the spacing is on point, he can just put up as much pressure as he wants to. As Oh, he almost ends the stock right there with another down it. Yeah. But as it stands, Dark Falcon just cannot get off the ledge. Look at this. He's trapped here again and again. I love that holy water to give him some freedom. But, oh, wow. Just barely hanging on from that prominence revolt. But he cannot take another one of those. I don't know if he can take another hit at all at this point. That blazing edge he's able to walk away from. But he's still trapped in the corner. Still can't seem to find a meaningful opening of any kind. 166% though, he's surviving with a lot of rage on him. This has been, for, <laughs> yeah, with the closing out of that first dog, this has been textbook suffocation. Like, just, you're not allowed to move anywhere unless I allow what you to go. Textbooks are you reading? I, <laughs> textbooks on how to suffocate? Ew. Hey man, <laughs> nursing, nursing students have some wild books, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> All right, uh, I believe it. <laughs> I'm not a nursing student, but my roommate, <laughs> my roommate was. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, regardless, it, is, it has been just so just, uh, constantly just being in strong positions throughout the entirety of this game. Like, even even Pyra can outspeed the, uh, the sluggish uh, nature of, uh, of the Belmonts. And just by putting putting themselves in the premier spot to always be always be a thorn in Dark Falcon's side, and the less holy waters you have to deal with, the better. Oh, that was pretty neat, actually. I liked the the jump out of shield, blazing end, because uh, especially since blazing end, despite it, once it starts spinning, it's treated as a physical hit, not a projectile. So it will, it'll clang and oftentimes beat most of the projectiles that Belmont end up throwing. Ooh, that prominence revolt, the sour spot of it is not actually enough to take the stock just quite yet. Oh, gonna be so, he got caught in the holy water, but somehow manages to live and actually all of a sudden now we have just a straight up two stock lead here. And switching to Mithra means that every single hit can lead to massive amounts of damage. That's what we're seeing. 29% off of a single. And then there comes out the Photon Edge. Oh, 190 now. And Belmont is... Oh, oh, okay. Down air kills. Sure. We're seeing Star Falcon <laughs> kill with all sorts of nifty moves that I don't never knew could kill before. He's really got to dig deep with some of the... Some of the kit that... that I mean, you're kind of forced to work with, but... You don't usually consider uh, Belmont as a as a character that struggles to kill, but I mean any character would if you struggle to find a hit on on a on a character, and Mithra can be hard to hit. Ooh, and now we're seeing the Pyra trapping him in the corner like we've seen time and time again. That's a, actually very frequently he's been throwing out that uh, that holy water while he's been trapped in the corner. It's been working out well for him, but that is not a safe option. And if uh, if Jonathan really wants to start hard reading that, he could die at like, any point. A nice job, though, mixing it up. That's probably what he was trying to punish. And then so then he goes up for the down tilt instead to get him off of him. Okay, we actually do have this Pyra trapped in the corner of Pyra dead. One stock apiece. I would not call this even game, but if if Dark Falcon can execute his game plan, he does have a path to victory, narrow though it may be. 
first step of that plan is to get eight more percent. So we, his percent will be 13 times 13. Um. <laughs> is it alive? <laughs> oh, okay. I guess the knockback scaling on forward air is not nearly as good as back air. And Jonathan has to be a little bit careful now. You're kind of dealing with a max rage character that can exploit ledge play. Like, you... It's oh, tense. that's super risky! How does he do it? How does he stay alive for so long? Oof. 75%? No way, who got it? Oh, okay. the landing there. The landing there, yeah, that's... Affectionately referred to as uh, Rob Nair in, uh, in some of the... It's by, by some people I am familiar with, but... <laughs> And it kind of it functions a similar purpose, just a big hitbox that you can fast fall land with. Not and it's not as Robin Air don't kill like that though. No, but it was we'll start killing at 185, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of it, it's useful in the same way. Not nearly as uh, as good as Robin Air, but similar functionality. Yeah, it does have similar functionality, but also because of the fact that all of Pyra's aerials are so scary. Normally against Rob, like you, you, if you're if you're worried about him nearing, you just go right through and hit him, you know, hit him before it can come out. But it's always scary to do that against Pyra, considering the fact that it's not just Nair, but all of her aerials are super freaking scary. Yeah, and, oh, it's... We'll have to see. We'll have to see. The Simon counter, counter pick. pick. Got him. <laughs> and, okay, it may, right, we so may be seeing... A bit of pre-gaming from Jonathan, who realized I should ban a Lila against Dark Falcon, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Still the Simon. Now, now, why do you think you kind of picked a Simon here? Well, there's only one functional difference to Simon, and that's with the Holy Water we just saw. It's fire, not work. <laughs> wow. I, 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 I'm talking from a more metaphysical perspective here, like. Okay, perhaps, perhaps then he needed someone with a little bit more experience, like Simon, who's a little bit older. Someone with Richter's a bigger forehead that he can maybe take some more hits to the noggin. Yeah, yeah, Simon probably could take a little bit more punishment, given how he's uh, uh, he's from a, he's from an earlier time. I think uh, I think Richter's from the French Revolution, while Simon is from before then. Uh, the 14th century? 13th mm -hmm. century? Uh, Castlevania War, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that apparently they're going to be making a spinoff with Richter for the Netflix. I'm, I'm hyped. I am hyped. Richter is not yeah. Trevor's grandfather, uh, grandson. Trevor is not, yeah, Trevor is not Richter's grandfather. He's his, like, great, 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 great grandfather. But hey, I'm okay with twisting the war if we get Richter. That's cool. All right, so now here we do have this. Sorry. Getting back to this game, <laughs> it actually looks quite different from the last one, I think. Unless I can't read stock counts, which I can. Um, yeah, we do have a pretty solid stock lead for Dark Falcon here. Oh, yeah. Comments Revolt, really strong move, but definitely very punishable. Especially with the fact that, you know, ooh, the Belmonts have ways of, you know, just punishing from halfway across the stage with F tilt with forward smash. And this is something we hadn't really seen uh, Jonathan have to deal with. What do you do when you're down a lot against the Belmont? The answer is struggle in vain, apparently. Yeah, because there's been there's been so many cases where uh, Jonathan will throw out these uh, these risky up bees just uh, as soon as uh, as soon as he feels like he's available to. He air dodges and, and rolls in a lot, uh, a lot out of the corner in order to try and like, get to these platforms or just get off, uh, get back onto stage. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate. He missed time to grab, but still, it's <laughs> it looks like Dark Falcon just shook off game one, switched to Simon, and said, "All right, I still know, I generally know what you're trying to go for with some of these landings, and if you're gonna keep air dodging in, I'll play center all day." up there will catch. Oh, that's a really, really powerful forward smash right there. And one stock left onto Donathan. He has so much work he needs to do. Getting some solid damage here, especially with this Mithra. But 
as we've seen, he usually ends up putting out stocks with the Pyra. And once he does, oh no, now he has to get in on a Belmont. And that, that's something that I don't think he's quite figured out how to do yet. I don't know if any human being up alive has figured a reliable way of getting in on Dark Falcon. So, oh, as this game continues, the, the gap seems to widen and widen. Victory is slowly but surely falling out of Dark... Uh, sorry, from Jonathan's reach. He does have quite a few more games to work with here, but this game might be a wrap pretty soon. I like the attempt at the up throw. Um, it, up throw to up air is not true by any means, but it can... It can catch people off guard since it has set knockback. Uh, so players that are just gonna do nothing will get caught by the up air that comes afterwards. And okay, the close out with the up tilt. Not calling it a comeback, but it's not undoable. Yeah, I'm surprised he's staying with the Pyra right now. I know that Pyra has a little bit more weight to her, but yeah, the extra mobility from Mithra might have been more important. And I think that he had figured that out too. Uh, he had stayed Mithra throughout that entire time on the second stock while he was trapped at ledge from what was basically like 80% to 120. But I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't go, he doesn't make the swap and gets caught with the rapid jab, which grant, granted Mithra has the same rapid jab, but still. Yeah. All right. We're going to be moving on to the next game here game three what sort of stage do you think we're going to be seeing for game three uh the same one i guess sounds sounds like <laughs> i honestly don't think john uh jonathan counter picks uh to anywhere but ps2 most of the time like he frequently will go back to a stage like this uh, unless i was wrong with my uh, he's just rolling it right back all right so the the, the simon was the right counter pick obviously because uh, that game one versus game two is completely, completely different. But now we're moving into this game three. Fresh slate. Let's see if... Okay, this is part of what we see uh, constantly Mithra able to do. These long extended juggles. Pressure from... It feels like anywhere on stage. Okay, trying to close the distance here. Those forward airs are very scary. But actually able to clank with those projectiles beat some of them out even beautiful job just barely spacing outside of that back air's range it feels like the micro spacing is just much much cleaner this time around that's one of the advantages of being mithra her speed allows for that sort of thing and now putting him at the ledge big job just going to go for another forward throw we now do see the pyra coming out this pyra does have the kill power and we've seen so many times jonathan able to do amazing amazing cleanup work at the ledge right there i think he actually di'd into that back throw and that was why the forward the the dash attack rather ended up connecting and yeah switches right back to mithra for these lower percents which i definitely think is the right call that stuff like that, on top of staying Mithra for longer than he than he has been prior, is what's going to dramatically change uh, change a set like this. Interesting choice with the go back to center stage, then photon edge towards the ledge. But okay, now we have switching back to Mithra. Ah, oh, doesn't. Oh, but he air dodges in the blast zone. He might have been able to live if he wasn't uh, mashing air dodge, but it's so tempting to do so. Well, doesn't it... directionally air dodge up and away keep you alive for a little bit longer? Uh, it still pushes your uh, physical body uh, forward. So, Wait, like, so the, the air dodge away from the blast zone will kill you earlier? Yeah. If you're close to the blast zone, the initial lurch sends you back and then forward. So if you air dodge close to the blast zone, it'll send you peeking into it before sending, uh, put, uh, changing your momentum forward. Which is why you really have to be careful about when you air dodge and how you go that, about doing it. Oh wait, I, yeah, when up? you are, uh, we can talk more about this later, I'm actually curious about that. Uh, but 
as we're getting back into this matchup, we actually have a much, much more even game. Game one is super one-sided. Game two is super one-sided. This time around, though, they're both deep in the red here on their second stock. But whoever takes this stock will seriously dictate the pace for the rest of the game. Having a stock lead as Belmont will... I mean, we've already seen how horrifying that can be. And having a stock lead as Pythra, also pretty solid. This Mithra now coming down. We've seen the amazing work he can do. Just quick aerials, beautiful spacing, continuously getting more and more damage. 45% already racked up. Ah, but gets right past him. And that snap, that back air, tippering, meaning that uh, not much of a not much of a lead, honestly. 45% is usually what you eat by default as Belmont. So yeah, that's just kind of your tax for playing this character. <laughs> Oh, the catch on the bottle doesn't really send him anywhere. Even if you catch uh, the holy water bottle, it will still progress at the same angle as if Belmont threw it, which is a pretty steep one. Oh, wait, but this is getting... You're getting ledge trapped by a Belmont. Oh, uh, we've already and seen that as... <laughs> we've seen that as Mithra. It can be really difficult to uh, get off the ledge. Okay, he finds it, but he's still not able to actually get an opening here switching to pyra i think just to help out with that recovery up smash not enough to do it but almost is and all of a sudden now this this recovery is looking or this this game here could definitely go either way looking for another down air there finds one but doesn't get the the sweet spot all of a sudden now it's whoever is at the ledge that's who's gonna be in deep deep trouble here and right now it happens to be dark falcon Another one of those uh, holy waters to get away from the corner, but still not being punished. 156%. That move's still not enough to actually do it here. Another blazing edge. Down tilt, but the second it just doesn't connect. The roll in. He didn't expect the roll in. He figured he was holding a light. Oh, oh, what happened? He dashed. He was just trying to take space. He saw Dark Falcon by the corner and said, I'm gonna. I, I saw you throw axe. I'm going to try and take this space because Axe takes a long time to recover from. And let's see him just run straight into it. He pivoted. Did he go for dash attack? I think I saw the very beginnings of dash attack come out here. Uh, I think he pivoted. Yeah, he pivoted. Oh. Yeah. Which means he could have been it's trying tough. to turn around. He could have been trying to pivot, cancel forward tilt. Either way, he was just caught, caught in like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, and now we have two games on the board for uh, Dark Falcon and one more, and that's going to be a bracket lead bet. After taking a pretty hard loss in winner's semis to Teapot, Dark Falcon managed to get the run back, and all of a sudden he's now one game away from resetting the bracket against Jonathan here. Let's see if he can actually close out the deal, though. Okay, already fade percent. And this Mithra this time around not really able to do that same, you know, massive amounts of work. I mean, keep in mind, in that game three, uh, we did see Jonathan get, you know, really early leads with the uh, with these big Mithra combos. And it still wasn't enough to have him help him close out the game. Okay, getting lots of hits here, 61% and growing. Putting Belmont off stage once more. I think he needs to be, yeah, it feels like, for the most part, Dark Falcon is getting out of the corner pretty dang easily, especially at those higher percents where, you know, the stock, you know, actually finishing him off really matters. Down air to up smash, still not enough to do it. The Belmonts are quite heavy. And now they're both deep in the red here. Getting this stock is gonna be massive because if if Dark Falcon manages to take it, we've already seen the kind of work he can put in with a stock bleed. You gotta be careful on his DI here because any little thing can just start <laughs> can start killing. I mean, we saw it with the, in the last set with up tilt uh, finding a stock for Dark Falcon. His entire kit is firing on all cylinders. You just gotta play it safe, but I mean, Pyra can certainly do that. That's gonna do it. Yeah, it will. At 174, down uh, the drag down neutral into uh, into the uppy. Big, big punishable windows, and I'm surprised that we're still seeing the Pyra. Like Mithra ha can have a hard time killing, but not so difficult that it's worth it to constantly be on Pyra. But the up to will uh, will close about the stock there.
Yeah. Honestly, that's like a really hard call to make, and it really paid off for Jonathan right there. A lot of people, their instincts would be like, oh no, I need to approach this, you know, this, this Belmont. But he was careful. He was like, okay, I just need to approach him like twice, and I take the stop. And so far, I mean, right there it worked out for him, but now he's back on this Mithra, and he's back in the corner, and he's back in the grinder. Oh man, more and more percent here. <gasps> that could possibly be a really big opening for Jonathan, but even then, not able to get the same mileage off of these hits that he was earlier on. I think at this point, once you get out of the corner, you might want to switch to Pyra. Just that extra weight might be enough. Yeah, it might be really helpful here. Another one of the very least another... trying to consume space, but you do have to keep in mind foresight is a it's a tool in Mithra's arsenal, and it's one that you will have to start trying to time on this onslaught of projectiles because it will allow you to get some openings. But I can understand why he wants to stay pirate, try to clash and break through the wall, and still be a threatening when you're landing with these big aerials rather than the the timing that you have to get with uh, with Mithra to break through. Oh god! All right, that's a that's a pretty important stock to be taking right there. All of a sudden, this is not unmanageable. It's I feel like I've been saying this time and time again. It's going to be difficult, but it's not impossible here. Oh, great spacing right there. That dash back. It's very honestly, we haven't seen a lot of it because not very often that the Belmont is just going to be approaching like that. Uh, oh, kind of a capitalizing on that rare burst option and reading the tech roll in place. <gasps> oh no! And Dark Falcon still saved his jump to recover, but I love the idea. I love that he went deep like that, and that's like it's. As you mentioned, it's just so hard to make some of these calls with when you switch and where, because both of them have the tools like fully functional characters, but you have to pick of who's better and who's worse and which situation. And you want to make the most of that edge guard, but do you take the time to switch to Pyra, who can absolutely recover and uh, and maybe even kill with that forward? Or who would who would know? But it's. A rough way to end that game. Well, the, the, the games are not quite done just yet. That is going to be a bracket reset, meaning that now everything is fresh. Uh, that was a reverse 3-0, I believe, on uh, Dark Falcon's part. So if you are Jonathan, after you've worked so hard, you've come so close to being the final Xeno Wi-Fi champion, uh... It can be a bit mentally affecting to all of a sudden and be put back on the same fitting as the guy who was in Losers just a moment ago. Um, still, I feel like there's there's a lot that can be adjusted on on Jonathan's part, and this is in I don't necessarily think we're gonna see like a six zero sweep, but it's really gonna come down to if he can refresh his mentality and come into this new set with a new Three, mindset. Two. Otherwise, yeah, I think we're going to be seeing repetition, 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 and that that's what, I mean, that's what Dark Falcon would want. So let's see how, in fact, it does develop. Um, I also, I, I don't know a good time to ask about it, but so with the air dodging when you're oh, okay, sent yeah, yeah. to the, to the off stage. So in this game, do they have the same system where you can buffer out of hit stun quicker with different options? How do you mean? Uh, well, I know that in previous titles, uh, you would be able to exit hits on quicker. For instance, if you air dodged or if you threw out an attack, than if you were to jump out of hits on. Yes. Um, so that, that is, is the case. So uh, would air dodging, uh, would directionally air dodging, what other option could you choose? Because, if, for instance, like you can't jump at that point, I would assume, because if you buffered an air dodge, you would be, that would be the fastest you could action, right? So since, so since the DI is different, uh, or not the DI, the um, the knockback scaling is different. Uh, thank you for the follow, Kuzuha. Uh, you, as, as it was kind of coined early on, it's balloon style knockback. So your speed decreases dramatically the further away you get from the source of the impact, which is why just holding in and some, and probably like throwing out of an attack to get out of hit stun is generally safer 
because uh, yeah, because you're still uh, you're just using normal DI to get uh, to reduce your speed instead of lurching yourself backwards. All right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the uh, the added extra sort of influence there. And also, if anybody else in general in the chat uh, knows more about this because I, I i would love to learn more about this you can always tweet at me quick quick plug right there or just you know talk in the chat about it anyway i do want to yeah, go back I'm to this game anything, I, I, I i i yeah, yeah. Uh, i do want to bring it back to this game here because honestly this has been a really even struggle between these two players okay this is something we hadn't really seen in a while those early percent huge combos from Jonathan's Mithra, and now he has the Pyra here, meaning that if you are a Dark Falcon, you have to be worried about dying. And a down air would probably kill at this point, right? Because down air up smash would connect. Uh, probably. And, yeah, but uh, being aware of that, that I like that he's just walling him out continuously. <gasps> oh, this is a super scary place to be in at the ledge against the Belmont. Even if you're only at 90. Oh, if you're, if you're at 90, you're already at death percent at the ledge, so. And he's not able to even get past it. So far, though, not getting hit by any of these kill moves, but he's getting knocked off stage again and again. The axe in his face, but I don't know if there was some hurtbox shifting involving there with the photon edge. So we are going to have Jonathan living for just a little bit longer as he manages to clean up the stock. And now Jonathan... Uh, well, he's pretty solid lead here after losing that last set to Dark Falcon has not let it affect him too much. Now he's trying to push the advantage here, Myth using Mithra's speed to possibly get past the, uh, the wall of projectiles of hitboxes that, ooh, we know that he can put out, but at the same time, one singular mistake leads to all of this damage. I'm not sure what that up B was supposed to be, but it ends up being a, 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 a quite a heavy tax. 57%, the tipper back here going to be connecting right there, but 57% already dished out onto him. We see Jonathan sticking with the pyre, uh, sorry, the myth, rather. Yeah, I, I, feel I, like I like this. I like this idea. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to approach. You can just stay still, block some of the, block some of the crosses going in. Try and see if you can recognize a, a pattern if you see any, but you're putting you're putting the ball in Dark Falcon's court. I, you have to eventually approach me because we've got two and a half minutes to spend. Full on gets by. And he, okay, he tried for the same kind of trick as before. Uh, only working once, being very aware to di out his uh, his Dark Falcon, and he. He's made these comebacks all night thus far. What's one more, right? Yeah, oh, at the same time. Look at that, 134% and trapped at the ledge once more against this Pyra. Okay. Uh, he's, he sees the Holy Water tap his shield and he disengages. Like, I don't even want to try and deal with it, which is like, fair. But eventually, if you're going to start making a call, jump from ledge Holy Water is a pretty good one to make. Is it getting, is it getting a little bit tense? The, oh, we got the up air right there, or was it the neutral air? Neutral air, neutral air. That was neutral air. All right, so Jonathan managing to stay with it and closes out that game, putting himself one game on the board for this final set of the entire Xeno Wi-Fi's existence. Wow, that, that kind of just sunk in. Yeah, this is end of an era. What? End of an era. I thought you said Nair, end of a Nair, which also well, was is true, yeah, because correct. that was the, <laughs> the very end of the Nair that closed out that last stock. Yeah, but it's, it's a little surreal. I mean, we've been in this, uh, we've been in the Xeno Wi-Fi grind for 66 weeks. That's a long time. <laughs> but... I mean, I'm sure, I'm certain any everyone is excited to get back into the into the offline era, see the whole music game. Not only with uh, Zeno, but also with the uh, other other New York uh, events, as mentioned, that being uh, potential monthlies, Encore, uh, Waypoint, whenever it comes back, if it comes back, all that, all that good stuff. 
Yep. All right, and so this is our th the final swan song of pretty much all of the the, the the everything we've seen for the past 18 months. How long has it been? It's been 15 months, I think, right? This started back in maybe April, so I guess that's 14 months of this. 52 weeks in a year plus 14 weeks. There's four weeks in a in a month, so that'd be another. It's exactly uh, well. It's 66 three, then. Yeah, because be in, in 14 weeks would be another three and a half months, so it'd be 15 and a half months. Hey, mental math. Let's go. <laughs> Wow. Just sorry, just the nostalgia. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. All right, so <laughs> look at these hits. Just They are going back and forth every single game. I, I really love how, mon how many times Dark Falcon... Like there'll be there'll be moments where he does like down angled back air into down angled back air just into pivot F tilt or dash back pivot F tilt. Like he'll just play super safe and then he'll mix you up by dash attacking one of these days. Or, or one of these moments. It's like you you expected me to have a pattern, but you always have to be on your toes. Just like you do have to be against Pyra because any especially on ledge, just any one of these clips, I'm gonna call it. Alright, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be still in this game and going thus far. Man, if every time Dark Falcon has a chance to start getting some, uh, or excuse me, every time Jonathan has a chance to gain this lead and gain this advantage, it's just D Dark Falcon finds a way to close that gap. He's playing a matchup that looks on paper just really, really bad. Like with when you start encountering things like foresight and things like speed and the uh, the combo game and advantage of both of uh, Pyra and Mithra just being so, so strong. But yet, he plays against the player most of his time, and it looks so... Sh it, it looks very, very frustrating to go against. And Jonathan still... He's still finding ways to get down, even with these risky air dodges that will eventually get caught as the frame traps are certainly real. If Jonathan's not in advantage, he's he's taking a lot and a lot of punishment. Still closing it out is uh, closing out the ledge play. He tried to catch the jump with that up air, but not quite getting it. But 140 now, you're certainly feeling very, very strong. Ooh, that roll was dangerous, but the up beat on uh, on the Belmonts is significantly quicker. Uh, frame seven as opposed to what Pyra has, which I, uh, as we see it again, you have frame seven up air. While Pyra is, is, is uh, frame 13, are you there? Yeah, frame, oh man, that, that, that photon edge coming out of the corner. Oh, and that down tilt putting him way off stage. But at this point, oh, this next oh, hit is gone. gonna matter so much. There it is, Dark Falcon managing to take that stock, but it's been a it's been a heck of a ride in this game thus far from an early from an early stock lead to John uh, to Jonathan Dark Falcon has just clamped and batted down the hatches saying uh, no 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 I'm going to I'm gonna maintain this pokeball and you're going to have to deal with everything that I'm gonna be throwing at you no mithra no mithra in sight which means these items are gonna be something you have to deal with also, hi, Brady. <laughs> All right, F-Tilt not closing it out quite yet. The, the Blazing End have, has been really good at proccing so many of these items, but they have, uh, or uh, battering away the projectiles, but they haven't done anything to get Dark Falcon off of his spot. Dash attack won't do it. The Prominence Revolt will whiff completely, and Dark Falcon will maintain neutral. Just however many times he can reset neutral, that's another that's another way to live, another chance to survive. Oh, OK. 
Okay, the Prominent Servo almost didn't make it back, but he did, he did close out on 113. This is damage. 36, nothing to scoff at. Oh, that shield is getting kind of low too. Have to watch that. We don't see many of the of the flame no don't see much of the flame nova, but that up smash will certainly catch. Alright, will he land with Danner? No, he lands empty and rolls. He didn't fast fall, so that's huge. Uh promise to won't no, he drops shield. Okay, this is getting mighty dangerous. This is getting mighty, mighty dangerous. Pivoting. Lots of rolls coming up from both sides as we reach 90 seconds on the clock. Not gonna go to timeout, but there's certainly time to play with, but that'll do it. Catching the jump from ledge just with a lean holy water. Not jump holy water. Ugh. And we get to see Belmont playing neutral as we reach 1-1 in this true finals. Man, there's so many, so many spots that could have swung in the favor of Jonathan. And a quick 100. But you do have to still be patient. You have to be patiently impatient if you're going to play on ledge against Belmont. Because you don't have a lot of invincibility to go around. But you also can't be recklessly picking an option because they'll scout that out too. It's tricky one way or the other. And Dark Falcon, after the switch to Simon, has got a... It feels like he's got a real handle on Jonathan's defensive progression. Still, an early start is really needed if Jonathan wants to close out this set. If he can. Because Dark Falcon looks like he's in top form. Oh, the, the just rawest F smash in the world, catching the dash back, and this is, I mean, I said Jonathan needed a quick start. Instead, it's Dark Falcon getting off to a absolutely ridiculous opening. 52 is the response from Jonathan, but he's, <laughs> it's rough to take 137 and have to climb your way back from it. I really, really do want, hit, want to see him stay Mithra, Mithra for a much longer period of time. Closing the gap like that, like it, it really can't be understated. Oh, did he, did he grab ledge? Yes, he learned from the previous game, and that's a stock. That's a stock on Dark Falcon's, uh, that's a stock on Jonathan's part. Edge guarding flowcharts may be on the menu for, uh, for Jonathan as he gets out to a wicked, wicked comeback in this, uh, in the early parts of this game, 156 now, and he's still Mithra. Well, he's, he's now gone, but he's still Mithra. Yeah, uh, I like this idea of staying oh, Mithra for so long. Hi, I'm back, I hi. assume. Uh, I can hear for you, yeah, hi, how's it going? All right, okay, good. <laughs> uh, if I'm, I'm going to try to I'm gonna try to just commentate, and if for some reason my internet dies again, then I'd just say that's the perfect way to end all of this. Uh, <laughs> it's win-win, really. True. True, yeah. Connection errors is uh, is fitting for sure. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's one thing we had not really seen for this the entirety of this set was those edge guards. We know how exploitable the Belmont recovery can be, but it felt like every time uh, Jonathan would go for it, he would end up dying. It seemed. So to see those start to come out more reliably could be a huge game changer. Cleaning up the stock right there. Now we uh, are possibly entering this game's end game as Mithra with lots of lots of uh, room to work with in those combos, racking up the damage. You know the Dark Falcon can make comebacks, but it's eventually, you know, it feels like the adaptation is starting to really come out. Uh, four. Yeah, it's been. It's been a rough road for Dark Falcon uh, in this game, having such a hot start. Like you could maybe argue he got complacent a little bit, but it seems more like Jonathan just kind of figured out some way to counteract this Belmont, which is just Mithra being Mithra in a lot of ways. Just being able to dash underneath uh, Dark Falcon's jump, uh, jump holy waters, being able to fly all across the stage and a matter of seconds as I think okay just quick update it looks like salty fun is uh 
having some internet trouble, so it's just gonna be me and my dulcy tones for the remainder of this true finals. We'll see how it goes. And we'll certainly see how Dark Falcon wants to make a comeback in this game if he can, but down air and up air not gonna do it quite yet. And oh no, he's at one okay. He was at 144, but the down air was a little bit overzealous on uh, on, uh, on Dark Falcon's part. Just this this uh, this combo right here, and I understand how many. Uh, there's been a lot of moments where Dark Falcon will do like down air into double jump, re down air or double jump nair things that to mix up his timings a little bit. But that was just full on down air, which is uh, full on punishable. <laughs> It's it's a tricky business, but that one stock, that one uh, uh, ray of punishment, that's what it's called. That one one hit is all it took to switch around uh, to switch around an entire game. And now we get to see uh, Jonathan finally getting his second game in a series. Will he close out? Or will Dark Falcon complete the loser's run and perhaps even well, bring it to a game five to attempt to complete the loser's run? Here comes a parry on the on the cross is a good way to get started. 44 is, is pretty good. And you're gonna be you'll be feeling mighty fine if you take all of these trades. Uh, yeah, all these trades on the on the whip and going hit for hit. Belmont will natively live a little bit longer just on weight, but it's not a matter of weight in a lot of times. It's how many hits you can find on Mithra, which right now is a plenty. Again, it, you know, games can change in a rapid succession, but it looks like Dark Falcon is ready to play a ton safer and a ton more aware of just his combo tree, just popping, um, popping the uh, popping the upbeat to confirm that kill, and hey, he's in a <laughs> he's in a solid stance yet again. As long as as long as he can keep a cap on Mithra, Dark Falcon is looking very strong in this game. Four, a quick swap to use the invincibility and get back to stage. Oh, oh, and the charge! The charge is what did it. He saw the tech on the platform and gave himself a little bit of extra juice to close out that <laughs> to close out that stock. Oh, huge, huge, huge plays and even bigger swings of momentum and the, the catch. More trades for damage, more trades for everything. Oh, and he was going for it again. He Big plays are the kind of name of this set thus far, because neutral has been tentative in the set two. In set one, Dark Falcon looked like he was in so much control, but set two, it's been it's been very different. It's been a little bit uh, tense. The Axe won't do it quite yet, as Dark Falcon still is a, in a percent lead, but he's playing so cautious. And the Prominence Revolt, eager, a little bit too eager on on his part. I, I, oh my god. A huge, huge $27 contribution from Gatsby. Thank you so much uh, for the match arena. As Jonathan is looking to end out this game and try and get to payout. But this means that uh, Teapot will be getting a split uh, for top three and... <laughs> Now we it's a decision on who gets the lion's share. Uh, will it be Jonathan or will it be Dark Falcon? Only time will tell. Back air to start combo, so it's certainly a, a, a prominent starter. The chase down around these platforms, really literally playing on this merry-go-round. Spot dodging the grab, very nice, very nice. Will he land? No, if he air dodges the plat. Oh, 40, you don't want to be getting hit by any of those if you can help it. Punishing the parry, good stuff on Jonathan's part, or good stuff on Dark Falcon's part, and closes it out. Yeah, he air dodges in the blast zone yet again. Tense. Like, just every game comes down to a matter of inches. 
Because, I mean, it's 46%, but keep in mind, that's like two interactions. That's like a, a, a grab combo and then a down air, and, and, and Dark Falcon could be dying. Thank you, Matis Mad, for the follow. You're seeing the end. This is Game 5, True Finals, the finale of the Xeno Wi-Fi era. Uh, between two of the players that came out to basically every one of these, almost every one of these, and you, can, you cannot have it any other way. Pyron Mithra, the newest character on the block, uh, up against a, a base, up against a newcomer in the base roster, Dark Falcon, Jonathan, Game Five, True Finals. Uh, let's let's see what they can put together. Ooh, the tech chase was nearly off, but you can cover it up with the photon edge, and you can build build a bear combos, build a bear advantage state. That's that's what Mitha can really do in in plenty of these spots. But. But the the, dam the damage can start racking up quickly. I really, I, I've said it plenty of times before, but I want Jonathan to stay Mithra. I want him to use that mobility. I want him to use that control that he provides. Mithra, uh, Pyra is great at ledge trapping, but you don't need to always be on Pyra when it's at kill percent, and instead just cover the whole platform with a single up smash when he's uh, when he's in disadvantage. That's a huge start for Jonathan because it's these type of starts and it, it's these type of cash ins for all of the information that you've gathered over nine games. Oh, this is going to be it. This might be one of those game fives. Caught the jump, does not catch a tether, but you can still keep Dark Falcon in disadvantage and only 20% on you thus far. You're feeling mighty, mighty fine. Still double jumping in neutral a plenty, but playing around this platform is part of what has gotten Jonathan as far as he has. While Dark Falcon has much preferred to stay underneath them, Jonathan will hop up and down and all around the PS2 platforms and gain a lot of positioning and a positional advantage because of it. Forward, uh, forward air into up tilt is not gonna. Not gonna close anything out, and again, don't call it comebacks. But Dark Falcon has been making making some miracles happen throughout today. If he gets the chance to do so again, he'll certainly take it, and that'd be a heck of a way to end this game. But okay, the triple swap. You don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna end it. Right, and that back air, yeah, 110. Even with good DI, which is out by the way, uh, still gonna close out on three stocks to one. It's, it's been a couple games, but Jonathan looks like he's finally figured out the best way to go around, the best way to play around Dark Falcon and his, uh, his just constantly fantastic positioning, and that's what these up there is going for. So many of them, and the switch to Pirate Boot. Yeah, the front the blazing end. Oh, oh, he was charging up Fs. <laughs> okay. I mean, it would have. I don't know if it would have killed. I don't know if that will quite get the air dodge. Saves them for a little bit longer. A couple rolls, not gonna do it. A couple down airs, whiffing. Didn't have the confidence to pull the trigger, and you know what? Like, you have to be. You have to be extra careful what you end up going for. Because Jonathan looks like he's trying to make this a three stock. No items out of the corner. And that is a. That has been a habit that. Is being stuffed by Jonathan and it's still, still just fine. The air dodge away, the down angle forward there with that sweet spot will close it out. It's, it's just, it's looking like a rough spot. Not an impossible spot. It never is impossible, but it's, it's looking like a rough one. Jump from ledge? No, he reads the neutral gun, but this times it. God, he was so early on the trigger, too, but maybe just a little bit too early. Will Jonathan slow it down, or will he still try to just exert his will over Dark Falcon? Because you're giving, you're giving Dark Falcon a lot of openings, but these borders out of shield have been pretty clutch. 
I'm I'm really waiting for the anti air to come through. I'm really waiting for the back air to not even not even kill spark. That's what happens when you get caught by Pyra back air and aren't ready to DI perfectly. You just kinda die. Oh lordy, oh lordy, what a ride. What a ride, but a pleasant one till the very end. Oh, that was that was still pretty solid DI on the end there. Like look at him. He sends Look at the wide angle that he gets sent at. He gets pulled to the corner, but maybe he was just a little bit late. But that, either way, that is that is the way this game ends. That is the way this set ends. That is the way Xeno Wi-Fi number 66. Again, thank you, Gatsby, for the Macharino donation, of which you can all still make Macharino donations. They are still very much available uh, up until tomorrow. But it's a... A tough pill to swallow, but it was a heck of a loser's run from Dark Falcon, making it as close as it was. And he made that matchup that, on paper, again, looks awful into something that looks really, really doable. Granted, it's online, reaction time, you can't be able to like react things and, and uh, properly foresight. But 